Hi, my name is Yusri Yusuf, and in this video, I'll be talking about air pollution source determination through modeling. The receptor model. Another name for the receptor model is the source apportionment model. The objective of this model is to determine the emission concentration of the source or multiple sources. This model can be summarized using this equation, where x is the sample concentration, for the ith species and the jth sample equals to the summation of the fraction of the ith species from the kth source multiplied with the emission concentration s of the for the j sample and from the k source. Now the species are usually elemental species such as nickel, cadmium, lead, etc. While the source our main air pollution sources such as power plant, traffic, industry, and others. The receptor model can be visualized using this diagram. This is the receptor model equation. And in this example, there are three sources of air pollution, where source number one is from the power plant, and thus K is of the power plant, Second source is from the traffic, and thus K is equal to the traffic. And source number three is from the industry, where K here is equal to the industry. From each source, three elements are emitted. The first element is the nickel element, and here it's the fraction of nickel that comes from the power plant. CCD here is the fraction of cadmium from the power plant, and CPB is the fraction of lead from the power plant. And these three fractions, if they were to be added up, should equal to 1. And the same goes for the other sources. The receptor model equation can be expanded to form these three equations. For the first one, we see that the sample concentration of nickel of sample 1 should equal to the fraction of nickel that comes from the power plant multiplied with the emission concentration of the power plant plus the fraction of nickel that comes from the traffic multiplied with the emission concentration from the traffic plus the fraction of nickel from the industry multiplied with the emission concentration from the industry. And the same logic can be applied for the other two elements. Let's take a look at some data we can use with the receptor model equation. In the left column here, we see the three different types of sources, the power plant, industry, and traffic sources. And the three right columns shows us the emission composition or fraction of the three elements, lead, nickel, and cadmium. 0 0.5 Zero here means 50% of lead comes from the power plant, 20% comes from the industry, 30% comes from the traffic. For nickel, 10% comes from the power plant, 60% from the industry, and 30% from the traffic, and so on for cadmium. Imagine that we set up a sampling station where we collect a sample of PM10. PM10 means particulate matter or dust of size less than 10 micrometers and we send it for analysis. The results show that 8.5 micrograms per meter cube is for the lead element and 10 micrograms per meter cube is for the nickel element and 7.5 micrograms per meter cube is for the cadmium element in that one sample of PM10 collected at our sampling station. We saw in the table that the nickel concentration is 10 micrograms per meter cube and that 10 micrograms per meter cube is for this x variable. So 10 equals to the fraction of nickel from the power plant, which is 10%, multiplied by the emission concentration of the power plant, denoted as S. PP plus 
the fraction of nickel from the traffic, 30%, multiply with the emission concentration from the traffic, and that is ST plus the nickel fraction from the industry, which is 60%, multiply with the emission concentration from the industry, or SI here. We do the same for the other two elements. For cadmium, it's 7.5 equals to 0 0.5 multiply with S power plant plus 0 0.10 ST plus 0 0.4 times with S I and for lead 8.5 equals to 0 0.5 multiply SPP plus 0 0.30 multiply with ST plus 0 0.20 multiply with SI. So notice here we have three equations. And three unknowns. So, since we have three equations and three unknowns, we can solve this set of equations simultaneously to obtain the three unknowns. So after doing that, you should get, for this example, SPP equals to 13.25, ST equals to 11.25, and SI equals to 1.5. The units for these values are microgram per meter cube. Now this shows that the power plant has the highest emission concentration compared to the other two air pollution sources. So here are some things you need to think about when you want to use the receptor model equation to determine the emission concentration of sources. You need to plan your sampling so that you'll be able to determine the emission concentrations of these multiple sources. So you need to think about where you, sh you should put your sampling equipment so that you'll be able to pick up um, the contribution from those different sources that you want to study. So for the previous example, we saw that we wanted to study the three different sources, so we need to place the sampling equipment in an area where we can be fairly certain that the sources would contribute to the air quality in that particular location. So other than uh, just estimating the location where these sources should be a factor in the air pollution concentration, you also need to think about the receptors that you are studying. So receptors are the, the items of interest with relation to the air quality, such as uh, school children in schools, or uh, patients in hospitals or locations of high density population. But if you place it in a location where it's sensitive, uh, where, where there are receptors of interest, then it could be an area that doesn't involve all of the different sources that could come to a certain location. So your results might not be, be able to uh, be close to the, um, uh, to the emission concentration of the sources. You also need to think about how many samples you need to collect because uh, you could Looking at the previous example, we saw that by just sampling once, you'll be able to determine the emission concentration, but these things vary. So you need to collect as many as you can so that you could see some pattern in the data for the emission concentrations. Or at least the concentrations are constants for you, for you to be fairly certain that the emission concentrations are, are what you calculated and can be, could be representative of the actual emission, the, the average emission concentrations from the sources. Now we would use elemental concentrations to, uh, to, to determine the source, so once you collect the sample, 
you would need to send it for elemental analysis because that's the simplest, uh, as far as I know, to get as many parameter, parameters or variable concentrations within that main sample concentration, such as, for the example before, the lead, cadmium, and nickel elements. But the more you have uh, elemental concentrations, uh, the, the more sources you can determine uh, the emission concentrations. But you would also need to know the emission concentration, the emission composition for each of these sources, which complicates the sampling method. So other parameters include meteorological parameters, uh, such as wind direction, which we alluded to in the, sam the location of the sample state, the location of the sample equipment. Uh, so if you study the wind direction and wind speed you'll be able, uh, of an area for a certain amount of time, then you'll be able to, to guess where you should place the sampling location preferably downwind from the source so that you'll be able to pick up um, these different types of sources in a single location. Or maybe uh, if that cannot be possible, that cannot be done, then you could place it at other, other locations. But you would have to do it simultaneously so you'll be able to get these concentrations for these other locations at the same time um, so it doesn't get compounded by, by the same source at, at two different locations at different times.